Hey, this is Class Creatives, and in this video, we'll discuss how some of the biggest movie series are made, including Denis Villeneuve's Dune, James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy, and the Godzilla King Kong visual effects blockbuster franchises. We'll take a look at how these critically acclaimed Oscar-winning movies utilize state-of-the-art 3D visual effects in their own unique ways to enhance the director's vision. In this video, we'll discuss how these award-winning effects are made by the best studios in the world, paired with state-of-the-art tools such as integrating 3D assets with practical sets and costumes to enhance the actors, how new technology like Unreal Engine are changing the way pre-production and movies are made in the modern day, and how all of the elements are assembled together to create some of the most groundbreaking visuals ever seen in cinema history. For the Dune franchise, Denise Villanueva brings his signature filmmaking expertise of using practical effects and shooting in real locations. Visual effects were used for the sandworms, various desert landscapes, and the eyes of the Fremen. The visual effects team consisted of over a thousand artists. For part one, the eyes were done by hand, but in part two, AI was used to bring the element of realism and precision that Denise envisioned. Riding the sandworms was a critical element that the movie revolved around. Without the ability to convey the concept compellingly, it would make or break the film to Denis. He wanted to shoot the scenes with real daylight, which he felt would be critical for the visual effects. His goal was to shoot the scene practically as much as possible so that the visual effects would blend as much as possible for heightened realism. Kill. The movie Jaws was used as inspiration to create the feeling of silence and tension as the sandworm approaches Paul for the first time. The concept of the idea of what you don't see is more frightening was a valuable lesson that Spielberg had taught Denis. It's a lesson that I learned a long time ago from Spielberg. One of the most complex shots Denis ever had to shoot involved a stunt actor running along the sand dunes, and when the dunes collapsed they would be pulled downward by three moving trucks. The timing had to be perfect and could only be shot in the morning due to the direction of the sunlight. The worms were designed to have a different relationship to the environment as a beast that lives under the sand at tremendous heat. The biology would explain how it feeds, how it evolved, and how it lives under such harsh conditions. Massive fans were used on set to make the character feel as if they are moving through waves of sand. The worms were animated to move similar to large whales, and they were targeted to have prehistoric epic movements. Detailed animations were created around how the sandworm mouths would move. For the ornithopters, lots of research was conducted on how the massive vehicles could fly and move realistically. Research on dragonflies and hummingbirds were analyzed for how the wings could bring the large vehicles into the sky with weight. Animation tests were created to plan out the movements that would be necessary in the films, which would then directly dictate their overall final designs. The motion blur on the wings were rendered based on the actual animation so that the realism could be conveyed for the actual speed of the wings. Live action versions of the vehicles weighed over 12 tons and were also created to match with the CG versions of the vehicles to blur the lines of realism. A variety of cameras were used to film the epic cinema masterpieces including Red Komodo, Sony Venice, and Ari Alexa LF. Everything shot in the desert was to be in IMAX. So the visual effects team had to animate and composite for these extended frames. Some shots had to be done specifically for IMAX framing purposes. Filming locations included a variety of locations such as Abu Dhabi, Jordan, and Italy. The budget for the sequel was approximately $200 million. The Fremen battle was entirely CG generated, with stunt coordinated fight sequences shot with motion capture. Mixing keyframe, stunt doubles, and motion capture brought the complex fight sequence to life. For the massive city structures, both the visual effects and the practical effects team followed the concept art closely to create the final assets in the movie. It was a challenge to keep the miniature versions of structures to feel real, as Denis didn't want common details like handrails added that help keep structures feeling real and not generated. The attack on Arakeen when the Harkonnens arrive was created in CG with different versions of the structures created so they could explode. Some explosions were shot on set in addition to them being created in 3D. The laser was also designed to look practical but still cool, which was a visual challenge to the visual effects team as it couldn't be too showy so that it would match the rest of the film's blend of realism and CG. Invisible effects were used throughout the film, where skulls were shrunk so that actors didn't look as if they were just wearing skull caps on set. Baron's red lights on his suspenser were added digitally. 
Some shots are changed and might be unnoticed to the untrained eye where cloth sim and outfits are completely changed. Doom Part 2 was a groundbreaking film when it came to its use of Unreal Engine for pre-production planning. The director of photography brought his experience with Unreal Engine from the Mandalorian television series. The complex desert environments and intricate lighting scenarios demanded a precise and efficient approach. By creating virtual scenes in Unreal Engine, the production team could visualize the desired shots, experiment with lighting, and make informed decisions about practical implementation. They were able to put many human characters into the virtual location to pre-plan where the shadow was going to reveal them and where the shadow was going to be off them. This allowed them to experiment with how light or shadows would hit various characters in the scene, helping with creative decisions for both adding additional lighting and ensuring continuity. This collaboration between the creative and logistical teams ensured that the film's ambitious vision was realized seamlessly. Unreal Engine proved to be an invaluable tool for the production of the complex and visually stunning second installment. Quick pause to tell you a little bit about Class Creatives. This will teach you how to take your 3D and 2D art to the next level. Learn from industry professionals with experience teaching at accredited universities. Land that new job, receive higher pay, and stand out from the competition. The great thing about Class Creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. Get started today for free with the link in the description. For the latest installment of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, variants of Rocket the Raccoon were created to tell the story of the character. With each installment of Rocket, the 3D character received various updates as technology advancements were made in software and hardware used to create each addition to each film. Making sure that the character stayed on model while introducing more details in the skeletal and muscular detail heightened the realism of the 3D character while staying true to his original design. Several tests in 3D were created for various lighting and movements to capture the details and emotions. Keyframe animation along with stage video reference allowed the animators to capture realistic movements while still having creative freedom to capture the character with human relatable emotions. Motion capture was not used on the new characters. Instead, reference shoots were shot so that keyframe animations could be hand animated to capture the finer details of the performances. This also allows the animators to add that extra layer of detail to push acting performances to their maximum appeal while conveying proper weight and believability on screen. Entire scenes were shot on a virtual set where they could capture the motion of the camera, which is very important for the full CG scenes. By incorporating the same types of camera operation throughout the films, it makes the 3D scenes seamless with the rest of the film shots. They had an actor playing Rocket, stand-ins for Groot, which allowed these references to be used for fine details such as eye movement and other extreme details. Clean plates are shot so that the artist can paint out the actors that are not supposed to be in the shot which are replaced by the CG characters. Sets are all 3D scanned and light is captured with light probes. The virtual versions of the sets contain the lighting, space, and everything the CG actors have to interact with in the shots. This way when the characters are integrated within the plate, everything feels seamless and that they belong to the environment they're shot in. For characters like Rocket and Groot, they are very different from humans and require careful attention to detail to capture their emotions and expressions. They had to translate human performances into the unique anatomy and expressions of these non-human characters. This involved meticulous attention to detail, especially in the eyes, where subtle nuances convey emotions. Additionally, the team had to consider the complex interactions of fur and other materials with the environment, such as wind and contact with other characters. Groot's evolving appearance from a malleable infant to a more rigid tree form also presented challenges in maintaining expressive animation. The entire process from initial concept to final render was lengthy and intricate, pushing the expertise of the animation team and the visual effects artists. Several additional characters were created for the new installment and animation tests were created to ensure they could capture the details accurately to match the world that was already created for the franchise. Stage reference and previs were all aspects utilized to bring the new characters to life for the animation team. Dogs were used for reference but no shots in the film contained a real dog. It's incredible to see the level of detail of the CG dog next to the reference shot of the real thing. The 3D dog contained all the skeletal and muscular details underneath the 3D model to convey realistic movements to the audience. Several massive set environments were created in 3D. Mixing practical shots and CG shots helped bring the realism to the screen. 
Live action actors were shot and composited with the CG based characters to create seamless cinematic shots, bringing all the elements together with the state of the art visual effects workflows. Capturing real dance moves and blending the stage footage assisted the animators to create realistic movements for the CG versions for the final composited shots. Action sequences mixed live actors on wires with CG backgrounds, practical sets, and 3D doubles. Mixing live action practical shots with 3D helps heighten the realism and push the boundaries on what is possible in the cinematic experience. As with several other sci-fi and Marvel franchises, actors are shot on set with practically built sets for the vehicles to bring realism to the shots with state-of-the-art visual effects compositing of CG elements to enhance the believability to the universe. For the Orgoscope, Sony Pictures built the planet-sized organic structure. The structure would be built from a collage of internal organic parts rather than mechanical features, and its massive scale proved difficult for the team to create. The challenge was to ensure that pieces of the station were identifiable as muscle or bone. A modular approach was used for the build, instancing sections of the environment and mixing and matching various shaders in a fractal-like technique. They started with large-scale textures and gradually introduced smaller details as the camera zoomed in. For the bone structure, they had to manipulate the subsurface scattering to achieve the desired look due to the massive scale. The muscle layer was created using a combination of techniques, including procedural generation to add details efficiently. To provide flexibility for compositing, different layers for fat, fascia, and muscle were rendered separately. Atmospheric effects like ground gases and mist were added to enhance the orgoscope's living organic feel. For the newest installment of Godzilla and Kong The New Empire, the monsters were created using a combination of CGI and practical effects. Each installment of the Kong Godzilla movies were heightened with better CG visual effects and compositing techniques for the live action shot background scenes. 3D versions of Godzilla need to be designed meticulously to look great from all angles, assuring that his silhouette remains recognizable for any angle the director might choose for the iconic character. A big challenge with monster movies is preserving the scale of the creatures and environments in 3D. It's paramount to the creators to make sure that the creatures feel larger than life. Virtual cameras utilize motion capture to create more realistic looking shots. These cameras are created in 3D and can be moved around a 3D scene. This allows flexibility for the cinematographer to get perfect shots in the 3D spaces just like the real world cameras on set. This way shots can match and blend seamlessly to the audience. Seven different countries such as Rio and unique locations like the Rock of Gibraltar were targeted for the location of the film due to so many locations already being used for several installments of the film previously. Suko the Mini Kong was a big driver of the new film with the idea of a son of Kong. They wanted large eyes for the character to be both cute yet tough. They attempted to make him anatomically correct for more realism and appeal. For Scar King, they wanted to tell the evil side of humanity, but from the monster perspective. The artist captured the look by studying apes that existed in nature that preyed on other apes. They wanted to contrast the design of Kong and create a taller, more agile, bright red ape monster. They decided to give Scar King a whip to build upon the axe weapon used by Kong previously. One of the most iconic scenes was the zero gravity battle. The creators wanted to showcase the titans fighting in a way you've never seen them fight before. This required combat in a totally weightless environment. The sequence was 95% CG and allowed the artist to create moments for the creatures that they normally would not be able to do. Well that about wraps up this video on how Dune, Guardians of the Galaxy, Kong, and Godzilla mix practical visual effects and live action sets paired with state of the art 3D visual effects to consistently create some of the most striking visuals in their latest series releases. Whether the visual effects are subtle or big and bold, each franchise uses their own special cinematic techniques to enhance the narratives. All departments work together to bring something new to each installment of the franchises. Are you using any of these state-of-the-art workflows in your personal or professional projects? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Perfect!